What's up everyone? My name is Cody Engel. Um, in our last video, we were talking about creating this calculator class and just kind of being able to have this reusable component that we could drop in anywhere and just use its functionality that we um, are asking for. So we didn't get too far into classes. And so in this video, I want to talk about utilizing properties and fields within classes in Kotlin to just enhance what we're doing. So with our previous video, what we had was a class which doesn't have any sort of state. It is uh, a, a stateless class, which can have a lot of benefits, but at the same time, it can have some drawbacks. And one of those drawbacks is we don't have a way of saving the previous result. And so our calculator, um, just me thinking about what a calculator would do, is I should be able to call like add, subtract, multiply, divide, um, all on, on its own uh, instances and be able to have uh, the result just kind of build up and uh, multiply on that. So with our current implementation, we can't do that because we don't know what what this result is. So let's go ahead um, and use some properties and fields to uh, to take advantage of that. So for our calculator now, we're going to go ahead and say that this will take an initial value. And so we will say initial that's not how you spell, spell initial, initial value, and it should be an int, and we'll say it can default to zero, and then we'll just say var current value, and it will just equal whatever our initial value is. I cannot spell today. Essentially, what we have now are, this is just a property that we use to initialize the class. And then this is considered a field. And that field of our class is a way where we can say, you know, if I want to say calculator dot current value, for example, I can call that and see what it is. So. We'll just do that real quick. Um, we'll say print extra, print extra line, current value, do that, do our dollar sign with the curly bracket. So we have calculator current value there. And then we'll just update this guy real quick and just say properties and fields we can keep the rest the same. And we'll go ahead, we'll run our calculator, and we can see 12 times 42, or 12 times 43 rather, uh, is 516. Current value is zero, which makes sense because we haven't done anything with that yet. We've just set it to zero, that is what our default is. And so with that, um, let's uh, you know retrofit this in. So current value is actually going to be what we would want to return for all of these. So we can say current value equals that and then return current value. And then we can do the same thing here. So we can just say, again, our current value equals first minus second, return current value. Same thing here where we'll just say current value equals that, return current value, current value again equals that, and then same thing, return current value. We go ahead, we run it, and now you'll see our result is 516, current value is 516. So with that, there isn't really um, that need anymore to like store the result like that or to print out the result in this way. So we'll just, we'll go ahead, we'll, do, we'll get rid of that for now. And then the next thing that we wanna do 
is with a calculator, you're not providing a first and a second number. What you're really providing it is just a number to do something with. So we'll just say this add, it'll take a number, but it's no longer going to take a second. So to do that, we'll just say current value, first, second. Um, we're just gonna say number there and then we'll do plus equals. So the reason why we're doing a plus equals is it would be the same as us saying current value plus number. In fact, the ID is giving us a, a yellow squiggly. My guess is it's going to tell us, yes, replace with a plus equal. So for that though, we now have this is in red, that is broken. So what we want to say is our current value plus our number. And yeah, so um, we now have this retrofitted to work in that way. Let's just make sure that it does work the way that we're thinking though. So if we do add, and so we have 12. So the downside with this add though is when we try and add 12 in this way, well, it's uh, it's just going to be 12, right? Because we we don't have um, we we don't have a, an actual number with that. So this is sort of like our starting value. So we'll we'll run it anyway, though. So we go ahead, we run it like this, and we get zero plus 12 is going to equal 12. All right, cool. What happens though? If so, we'll we'll remove this current value. We'll just say this one is our result. And then if we just say calculator, add, let's say 32. And let's say, let's say for this one, we want to start with two. So we'll say our initial value is two. We add 12 to two, so 14. And then 32 to 14 should be what, 56? 46. Uh, now would be a great time for me to let all of you know, while I do have a bachelor's degree in computer science, I absolutely hate math. So, um, yeah, basic math, any math, I hate it. Anyway, moving on now, we have our results here. So it would be nice if we could do this with everything else though. So let's go ahead. We will update this. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy number and paste it in here, same thing, we'll just paste it in there, and then paste it in there. So we have a bunch of broken stuff, that's fine, we will fix that. So um, actually really at this point we'll just do this, we'll copy that, paste you in, paste you, and paste you, and then we'll just work our way up. So. This one needs to be a divide equal, divide by number. This one needs to be a multiply, so multiply equal. And then this one needs to be a subtract, and so subtract equal. And now we should be able to, with our calculator, to be able to do like, yeah, subtract three, calculator, multiply this by 54, uh, calculator, uh, let's say we want to add it by like one and then we'll, we'll do that for now. We'll run it. And so we can see with our calculator, we have two plus 12, 14 plus 32, 46 minus three and all of that. And then our result ends up being, uh, 2,323. The last thing that I want to show is really just to say, let's divide it by say two. Um, or actually, let's divide by seven. You know, a good, good prime number, which um, I don't know if twenty three twenty three will actually go into that. Probably not. Uh, we'll, we will actually we'll do two again. I suck at math. Hate math. Um, even number definitely will will cause a remainder for that. So if we go ahead and run it, um, we will get. 1661 and so if I do this and do um, 1161 times 2 well we get 2322 not not 2323 
And the reason why is our calculator works with integers. It does not work with um, numbers that can have decimals. So it doesn't really have much to do with the point of classes um, and the point of you know fields and all of that, but just wanted to call that out real quick. So just to summarize what we talked about today, uh, we were we were talking about creating our calculator and being able to provide it with properties and fields. And so these properties uh, are, are the property of having like an initial value being passed in um, with its field for a current value, initial value. This is fairly uh, rudimentary in terms of what you can do with fields in Kotlin. Um, you can get a little bit more advanced. So you can say like, um, if I wanna, so current value is int, and then if I wanna say, define exactly how we should set the value, or define exactly how we should get the value, we can do that here. Uh, for the purpose of this video, um, there really isn't a need for that. Uh, and I think with where we are at in the current tutorial series, it would be a little bit premature to talk about that. But if you are interested in it, um, let me know in the comments section down below. I'd be more than happy to talk about them and um, kind of give it its own uh, specific video where we can really dig into that. But otherwise, that's really it with, uh, with uh, anyway, that's really it with properties and fields on classes. If you have any questions, let me know down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to know when I upload my newest video, be sure to hit the notification bell. You'll get a push notification. Otherwise, though, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.